It's October 12th, 2012, and the Washington Nationals are on the verge of punching their first ever ticket to the postseason as Cardinals ace Adam Wainwright is getting knocked around. Ryan Zimmerman went deep to make it a 3-0 ball game at one point, young phenom Bryce Harper hit one out, followed by Michael Morse hitting a two-run shot to make it 6-0. The Cardinals were not quite done yet, scoring five runs while the Nats got one more to cut their deficit to two. But by the time the ninth inning rolled around, the Nationals were three outs away from a trip to the NLCS. And then... The St. Louis Cardinals were just coming off of a World Series championship the year prior in 2011, a fall classic which featured the most ultimate choke job, arguably the biggest in baseball history, and one that we'll explore a little later in this video, a video that will consist of some of the biggest choke jobs of the 21st century. So back to our nation's capital. The Nationals have taken a two-run lead into the ninth and are just three outs away from moving on to the next round. Carlos Beltran leads off the inning with a double, followed by a ground out to third two outs away. Alan Craig then strikes out, one out away, and up comes Yadier Molina. Molina would go on to work a five pitch 3-2 count and on the sixth offering take a high off speed pitch for ball four. Up comes 2011 Mr. October David Freeze, and he would work a 3-2 count, checking his swing on the 2-1 pitch and taking a relatively close one for ball three and taking ball four to go to first base. The bases are now loaded, and up comes the worst hitter on that 2012 team, Daniel Descalso. On the mound, Drew Storen, who had a 2.27 ERA in his 30 and a third innings in 2012. Surely he'll be able to get the worst hitter out in the Cardinals, right? Well, no, because on the very first pitch, Descalso would pull the trigger, smoking one up the middle that would go off the glove of shortstop Ian Desmond and into center field, bringing home two runs to tie the game in front of a stunned crowd of nearly 46,000. As for the Cardinals, they weren't done. The next man up, Pete Cosma, would line a base hit in the right field five pitches into his at-bat, driving home two runs to give the Cardinals a 9-7 lead. There was only one good thing for the Nationals here, and that was the fact that Jason Mott, St. Louis's closer, was the next man up to bat. Mott struck out, and the Cardinals' ninth inning magic was done. And as for the bottom half of that inning for Mott on the mound, no big deal. Jason Wirth would fly out to lead off the inning, Bryce Harper strikes out on some high heat, and Ryan Zimmerman pops out to second, capping off one of the biggest postseason choke jobs you'll ever see, one in which resulted in heartbreak in Washington, D.C. We're now going to take a trip to Houston, Texas in 2015, where the Astros have a 2-1 series lead against the defending American League champion Kansas City Royals. The Astros are a team that went all the way to the World Series in 2005, got swept by the White Sox, and then seemingly went into a deep depression for about a decade, failing to make the postseason for nine straight years. From 2011 to 2013, the Astros failed to win more than 56 games. They were really bad. 2014 showed a little more promise as they won 70, and then 2015 rolled around, and although they failed to win the ALS, making a run for it and finishing two games behind the Texas Rangers, they went on to secure the second wildcard spot, take down the Yankees in the wildcard game at Yankee Stadium, and take a commanding two to one series lead in the ALDS, and that's where we get to this moment. Salvador Perez led off the scoring of this game with a two-run homer, giving the Royals an early 2-0 lead. Carlos Gomez must have taken that personally, because he'd lead off the bottom half of that same inning with a solo shot, making it 2-1. Young rookie shortstop Carlos Correa then went deep in the third, tying the ball game up, and this was only the beginning of Correa's productive day, as he'd later slash a double to the right field corner to bring home George Springer and give Houston a 3-2 lead, later swatting his second home run of the game, a two-run bomb this time to make it 5-2 and it only got worse for the Royals, with Colby Rasmus hitting a solo shot to go back to back with Correa and make it a 6-2 ball game. Six outs away from their run for a championship being over. But the Royals were not done. After three consecutive singles to start off the eighth inning, Lorenzo Cain would line a base hit to left, scoring a run to make it 6-3. A pitching change would be made for a lefty on lefty matchup against Eric Hosmer, but that didn't matter, with Hosmer lining the Royals' fifth single in a row, making it 6-4. to four. Next up, Kendry's Morales, and a grounder up the middle that would skip over Correa's glove is what tied this game up. And this is all exactly what those 2014 and 2015 Royals were all about. They didn't rely on the long ball, but instead small ball, putting the ball in play and finding that good things happened. 
Another ball put into play would score Hosmer to give Kansas City the lead, with Hosmer going back out and hitting a two-run home run in the ninth, giving the Royals a three-run lead in which they'd keep to force a Game 5 back home. The Astros actually had a lead in Game 5, and blew that too, but in less dramatic fashion, as the Royals would score seven runs from the fourth inning on, winning the game and winning the series. We're going to go back in time now to chronologically the first choke job of the three in this video. Let's go over to St. Louis, Missouri. It's Game 6 of the World Series, and the Texas Rangers are just coming off of a Game 5 victory in which they took a 3-2 series lead. The Cardinals are fighting for their lives, and the Rangers are trying to end their lives. The Rangers wouldn't waste any time in the first, as a Josh Hamilton single would make it 1-0 Texas, but the Cardinals would punch right back, with Lance Berkman hitting a 2-run homer to make it 2-1. Skip ahead to the 4th, and Mike Napoli would give the Rangers the lead with a double. A Yadier Molina bases loaded walk would make it 4-4 in the sixth, and that's when the Texas Rangers started to get to business. After Adrian Beltre went deep to right center to give Texas back the lead, Nelson Cruz would follow with a third deck bomb to go back to back and make it 6-4 with an Ian Kinsler base hit later in the inning making it 7-4. Five outs away from having his season ended, Alan Craig would go deep, but that's all the cards got in the eighth. The Rangers wouldn't score in the ninth, but they were now three outs away from their first ever World Series win. Neftali Feliz, the Texas Rangers closer, he was pretty damn good. In 2010, he went out as a reliever and won Rookie of the Year. He became an all-star, threw almost 70 innings with a 2.73 ERA, struck out 71 hitters, got 40 saves, and was a big reason as to why the Rangers made it to the World Series that year. As for 2011, more of the same. In over 62 innings, the hard-throwing righty struck out 54 hitters with a 2.74 ERA. He was one of the best in the league, and here he was on the mound for Texas about to end the Cardinals season and give the Rangers their first ever championship. A strikeout would start off the bottom half of the ninth two outs away from a title. Up comes Rookie of the Year and three-time MVP Albert Pujols who would line a double in the left center. Lance Berkman then walked, putting the tying run on base for St. Louis and up walks Alan Craig who gets frozen on a 2-2 off-speed pitch for strike three. One out away from a title. David Fries then walks up to the plate, and this isn't necessarily the guy you would pick to be a hero, let alone a postseason hero. During the 2011 regular season, David Fries hit 297 with a 791 OPS. That OPS of 791 was well above average at a 116 OPS plus, but that wasn't near the best on the team. Neftali Feliz ends up getting ahead on Fries with a 1-2 count, so what does he decide to do? Attempt to blow a 98 mile an hour heater by Fries, who knocks it the other way over the head of Nelson Cruz for a two-out game-tying triple. Cruz would later admit that he actually played in instead of deeper in right field during that play because he wanted to be closer to the celebration. Ouch. Josh Hamilton would give the Rangers the lead again, hitting a two-run shot in the 10th to make it 9-7. After two straight singles to lead off the bottom of the 10th, a bunt would put runners on second and third for the Cardinals with one out. A grounder to third scored a run for the Cardinals, but the Rangers were one out away from a championship yet again, and Lance Berkman would come up to the plate this time. Four pitches into the at-bat would make it a 2-2 count, and the Cardinals were down to their final strike for the second time in the game, only for Berkman to swat a base hit in the center to tie it up at 9. The rest is history. David Fries would hit a walk-off home run in the 11th, and after trailing early in Game 7 by a score of 2 to nothing, the Cardinals went to work scoring two right back to tie it, and going on to score six unanswered runs altogether, winning the World Series. This is arguably one of, if not the biggest chokes in baseball history. The Texas Rangers went from having the Cardinals by the throat twice to losing that game and the next. There have been tons of choke jobs in baseball history, so let me know if I should do a part two, and thank you for watching.